Welcome back, warriors, to another bone-crunching episode of The Worst Fighting Game, the show whose number one rule is to not talk about doing an obvious Fight Club reference. I Wait, I just kind of did one there anyway, didn't I? Anyway, last time, all 63 and one-third members of the Clay Fighters tried and failed to knock our reigning champ Expect No Mercy from atop of its lonely throne of stinky bones. Now, when I go back and review all the previous contenders and pretenders we've had so far, one thing struck out at me. <laughs> They're all old as hell, as we've yet to even break into the sixth generation of consoles. While Mortal Kombat, Tekken, Soul Calibur, and a few others became the standard bearers during these dark times, weirder, crappier button bashers were becoming few and far between. But we're going to rectify that today with one of the crappiest offerings from said era, 2004's Fight Club. I remember this thing being reviled by pretty much everyone with a pulse back in the day, as it got some extremely savage reviews. But were they savage enough to topple Expect No Mercy today? Well, we won't know for sure until we get it in the ring. Fight Club's publisher, Sierra, or more accurately, Vivendi Universal, put out a lot of product in the 2000s, with some of it being all original IP, while most of it was based on various media properties. But for every Hulk Ultimate Destruction and Scarface, there was a Fight Club or Lawnmower Racing Mania. The former, for example, was developed by a new startup called Genuine Games, which was composed of former staffers from both Insomniac and EA. I can't imagine that they imagine their first major project in the booming billion dollar gaming industry would be a fighting game based on a five year old movie that was about toxic masculinity and carried a strong anti establishment, anti capitalist message. But here we are. Anyway, there's not much else to the development history of Fight Club. As I said, Vivendi Universal hired a lot of studios to put out a lot of licensed video games, and I'm assuming that was the case here. Tight deadline, minimal budget, zero marketing, etc. The one interesting factoid about this game, and I'm sure most of you know where I'm going with this, is the inclusion of the red-capped wonder, Mr. Fred Durst. As some may know, Freddy D is a big fan of Fight Club. In fact, he's seen it, About 28 times. but he's also a fan of the movie's director, the legendary David Fincher. Fincher actually gave Fred some crash courses in the art of cinematic direction back in the day, and you can see the fruits of that labor in modern masterpieces like The Fanatic. You okay with some music? You like a little Limp biscuit? Sure. You like a little biscuit? Yeah. yeah. The real reason Fred is in this, though, is because it was a clause slash demand whenever a game publisher wanted to use Limp Bizkit's music. Hey man, you want our track? Then I gotta be playable in your game. Bottom line, bro. Wow, what a businessman. So yeah, now that we're all up to speed on this issue, where exactly does the L-I-M-P Biscuit appear in the game? Well, it's mostly found in the... Once you boot this sucker up, right off the bat you are assaulted with a PS2 as fuck intro that's filled with quick cuts, lots of action, and the dulcet tones of Head for the Barricade, one of Limp Bizkit's better songs off Results May Vary, which is factually their worst album that everyone's still a bit too harsh on. I just think it's neat. This intro is actually kind of intriguing for a reason I'll get to later, but for now, allow me to present to you the moist, rainy main menu of Fight Club, which should look familiar if you owned a PS2 during this era and had had even a passing interest in fighting games. This is because it looks exactly like the menus in Final Fight Streetwise, Def Jam, Urban Rain, Beatdown, uh, Street Fist, The Punchback, you know, all of the 2000s. Everything is desaturated to hell, there's this low energy beat that's barely audible, things just look kind of depressing, and this is all to prep you for the bad times that await. First up, the character select screen. You have these ID cards here, which are kind of 
cute, but you don't get a full view of any of the quote-unquote characters. Those are very loose quotes, by the way. These are real-time 3D models, and you're allowed to select their secondary costume on the screen, but you can't see them because it's just their headshots, so it's kind of, it's kind of useless, and that's a good start. All right, so there's Jack, Tyler, Officer Stern, and Bob, and then like some of the tertiary characters that I think are from the film or the book. Uh, the mechanic, Lou and Raymond, were they even in the literal fight club? Or were they that desperate to fill out the roster? If so, that's a pretty good reason not to make a fighting game based on Fight Club. What's more is that 99% of the time, it's the characters that make up the memorable core of any good fighter, and if you lack that, even a little bit, fans will let you know. Just ask this guy right here. It's the unique personalities and wild movesets that draw you in and make you want to experiment with the whole cast. But that's not the case here. Raymond, Angel Face, Lou, and the others that I'm not even going to acknowledge are the furthest thing from beautiful, unique snowflakes. I realize genuine games couldn't do much in terms of character design because, you know, this is based on Fight Club, but it doesn't help that the models look pretty rough by 2004 standards as well. Even Freddy D is lacking in the charisma department as he doesn't even have any voice clips. In fact, I don't think any of them do. When you win a match and your character does a victory taunt, their lips move, but they're as silent as the grave. Man, that's awkward. I would chalk this up to a bug, but I don't think it is. I just think they forgot to record the lines. Environments are dark and dingy, but again, this is a Fight Club video game, so I can't fault them for understanding the assignment. There are some fancy graphical touches though, like some super intense spotlights, a shitload of rain, and even blood that splashes onto the screen, which, while technically impressive, does tend to make things hard to see here and there, a great feature for any fighting game. The UI is also kind of bland, I mean, just look at it, but funnily enough, pre-release beta screenshots look a fair bit more dynamic. And Jesus, check out this officially released bull shot from back in the day. The game does not look like that. Everything is lies. Everything is lies. The soundtrack, as mentioned, does have some biscuity goodness, along with Korn, Queens of the Stone Age, and the Dust Brothers, so at least it gets some points there. And finally, I know you've all been waiting for it, but yes, there are endings for each character via the arcade mode, and they're about what you'd expect. Or slightly worse. Once you've defeated uh, Nedward Eorton over here, you're treated to a very brief 15 second CGI clip that just cuts off at the end, where, where it seems like your character is going to keep talking or there be you know, some type of punchline, but no, it just hard cuts to black. I went back to school because I was afraid of Tyler. I remembered why I wanted to go in the first place. I came back to thank him for showing me how to live every day as if it were my last. And that's pretty much it for the ending, so, oh wait, wait, there's a far more elaborate one in the cinematic Netherrealm style story campaign, which we'll dig into a little bit later. Wait, why don't I just dig into it right now? So yeah, Fight Cloud's presentation fails to impress in a lot of areas, but it still might edge out the game's mechanics. Uh, allow me to explain. Despite there being a decent amount of fighters, 10 from the start and 4 unlockable, yeah! there really isn't 14 in total. Uh, there's 3. Yeah. Allow me to explain. When you start the create a fighter mode that's called the member services, you have the choice of three fighting styles, martial arts, brawler, grappler, and yeah, that's your three characters. These styles are divvied out amongst the roster. Slim guys are martial artists, average dudes are brawlers, and husky boys like myself are the grapplers. And unlike something awesome like 
uh, Def Jam Fight for New York, there's no variation amongst these styles, no unique animations or special moves. These are three static movesets, and everyone has to share. Tyler and Angel Face, for example, have the exact same throws, the exact same combos, the exact same everything. I, I think they have the same face. You can't imagine how boring this makes everything. Yeah, each style has about the same punches, kicks, and combos as an average Tekken character, but there's no flash to any of it, as it's just the same stuff you'd see in a low-budget MMA game. So you're gonna experience the same thing over and over and over again. It's just grating on the soul. Now, to be fair, Fight Club's gameplay does have a few nuances, but they make very little difference to the proceedings. If your health bar is low, this little alert symbol pops up, which means you're susceptible to a major injury, which comes in the form of a quick x-ray shot that will show your bones breaking, usually via a throw. In theory, this should disable your arm or leg in the next round, but no, they screwed that up too. Fight Club doesn't work on a best two out of three round system. There's just the one, so breaking your opponent's arm in arcade or versus doesn't have any repercussions. Those only come in if you create a boring man and enter the survival mode. Here, you have to beat a bunch of fighters in a row on one life bar, and it's also here where you can sustain lasting injuries. If your arm gets broken, it'll be disabled in the next match, and you'll have to go to member services and spend some XP to get it patched up. Again, this only affects your caw or your uh, calf, so it might as well not exist. None of this stuff is applicable to Tyler, Jack, and the, uh, rest. Related to this mechanic, you or your opponent can choose to tap out early from the match by pressing two buttons together, which essentially saves you from having your leg or butt bone broken. <laughs> butt bone broken, I can barely say that. Again though, there's no real point to doing this in most of the available modes. Now, what do you get if you beat nine guys in survival mode? Well, you unlock someone named Richard Chesler, who, wait, Jack's boss? He's not in the Fight Club! And I think with that, I've broken down everything in regards to the uh, gameplay. It's a bog standard 3D affair that honestly feels like you're playing a simple 2000 or... Wait, 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 remember eight minutes ago when I said... This intro is actually kind of intriguing for a reason I'll get to later. Well, it's now later. Said intro clearly shows in-game cinematics where you and your opponent go busting through a stage element, like a window, a fence, or a door, but fuck me, I can't find a way to do any of these. Nowhere in the game is this mechanic explained, not in the training mode and not in the move list, so, you know, let's look elsewhere. Okay, so there's no FAQs. Oh wait, wait, well there's this one, uh, but the dude never finished it. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, okay, the game's actual instruction manual doesn't list them. And uh, finally, let's check. Yeah, they're not on YouTube either. Hell, I even checked out other people's random arcade playthroughs because I just assumed I was crazy by this point. But yeah, zero, zilch, nada. This leads me to believe that they are not in this version of the game, but rather the unfinished beta I mentioned earlier, and the intro was recorded off that build. But you know, for the sake of argument, let's just say I'm wrong, and they are present in the final version that was sold in stores, well, that still sucks if true. If one of your mechanics is this hidden and this vague, and there's zero explanation on how it works, even in the manual, well, you fucked up. If you out there watching this have any inkling on how to perform these stage interactions, do enlighten me in the comments below. I'd love to be wrong here. Moving on, I do have to give credit for Fight Club's collection of modes. There's Arcade, Versus, Survival, Training, Baby's First Create a Fighter, and even an online option. Obviously, that last one is useless to us in 2023, but hey, they made the effort. There's also the Cinematic Story Camp 
campaign, where you play as a nameless protagonist that's trying to track down Tyler Durden. Honestly, aside from the CGI ending, which actually tries to tie this game's events into the movie in a crazy way, this is a painfully dull and awkward experience. Uh, why? Well, here's a 100% unedited clip from one of the cutscenes. Irvin told me to come. I'm looking for Tyler Durden. Check inside. Fuck off, pretty boy. Even if I did know where he was, I couldn't tell you. Then give him this message for me. Fuck you. I can remember that. And fuck you too, pretty boy. What are you looking at? I'm looking for Tyler Durden. I want to join the club. Yeah? Fuck. Off. We're not taking applications from losers. Beat it. I swear I didn't fuck with that. But yeah, the mechanics of Fight Club are either horseshit, pointless, or non-existent, but it has more modes than almost every other game I've played on this show, so I guess it balances out? Eh, I think it's maybe a bit too early to make that judgment call until I start talking about the- This is shockingly one of the game's better points. Yeah, a good number of the animations are stiff and the speed of them is all over the place, but the controls and general feel of Fight Club are perfectly serviceable. You can run, go into dash attacks, circle around your opponent, and it's all fairly responsive. There's also a decent sense of impact when said attacks connect. I mean, it's still several steps down from Tekken and Virtual Fighter, so for a better comparison, it's more akin to like... Yeah, Tao Feng Fist of the Lotus. Uh, take that for what you will. So there's nothing too egregious here, but honestly, I'm more pissed that all video long, this game has tried to woo me with fluffy window dressing. Uh, oh, Limp Biscuit songs, huh? Having the King of Nookie be playable too. Uh, oh, there's also a bonus skeleton skin you can access with a password? How dare you try to riz me up, Fight Club? I see through your thin veneer of edgy 2000s charm. This is one of the few times where it's a combination of the roster, yeah, you know, these human dynamos of excitement, and the core gameplay being the biggest offenders in a worse fighting game episode. Cause truth be told, everything else about Fight Club is fine. Like I said, it controls and feels okay, there's a ton of modes, and it does have a kind of goofy charm about it. It's just so boring to actually play as every match is identical to the last. Whittle down their health with one to two combos, do a throw, rinse and repeat, with a homemade bar of soap, of course. So where does that put us? Well, honestly, I think Tyler, Bob, and Jack's rapidly declining sense of self-worth are destined for the ever-exclusive, close, but not quite tier. Oh, and also, I'm gonna hit this box art in there as hard as I can! And with that, another episode of my pointless crusade to find something worse than Expect No Mercy has ended, one minute at a time. I guess I just felt like destroying something beautiful, which is a reminder, of course, that we need to sometimes lose everything for us to be free to do anything. Uh, we're the same all-singing, all-dancing crap of the world, and I am done with all the Fight Club quotes. If you know of any other contenders you think could take on the king of amateurs, do let me know in the comments below or hit me up on any of the socials you see on your screen. Until then, warriors, I'll see you next time on The Worst Fighting Game. To the character, you hit a lose a hit of win. I'm only asking you. Either you beat him or you beat him like an amateur. Either you drive or you get driven like a passenger. The fight's around the corner. So pick the one you want to represent your way. Go head to head with your opponent. Fill it in the air. The tension is electric. The glory's in the name. This is something epic.